Hey guys, welcome to the Dashni Academy. My name is Pramod, and welcome to the series of manual testing interview, behavioral or scenario based question. This is the part three. I have got very very good response for part one and part two. If you are new, make sure you watch the part one and part two where we have discussed about almost like ten or eleven plus questions, basically scenario based and real life questions, guys. These are the questions which interviewer will basically ask you. Basically, whenever you have interview, right? Any kind of interview, you they will ask you this question definitely. All right, so let's get started. And today we are going to cover the part three, where we have more number of questions. I'm going to discuss about the real examples how generally interviewer asks the questions related to the manual testing. All right, guys. Disclaimer: Please make sure that you watch this video in 1.5x or 1.2x so that you cover the full of the video as well as all the notes that I'm basically going to discuss will be available in the description. So don't worry, and you can. See them properly. Okay, all right. So let's start with the first one, which is how will you estimate this project? So what happens is whenever they will give you any kind of a project. Suppose they have a project. Okay, now they have given you a project where you have a login page, right, and you have a dashboard page. And after that, suppose it's a e-commerce website. Now, how will you estimate this? And this is very very important question because now understand what they want to know. Right. Think about it before seeing the answer. Right. What exactly they want to know by giving you this project? Okay. See, they want to know about your process. What exactly the process that you basically follow? What will be your test deliverable? As a software tester, manual tester, or anyone, right? What What will be your deliverables in nature? They just want to know. They They want to know how will you basically do a re resource allocation as well as how will you basically estimate the man hours especially. Right. Now, see. Again, as a testing process, how I will give this, give this answer, right? So very easy, right? First of all, you know this is our STLC life cycle, which is software testing life cycle, right? Which document you will basically you want? For example, here in the requirement phases, uh, you want BRS, FRDs, right? SRS, right? All these documents, your test plan, your test cases, RTM, bug report, and email. This is like your process. They are basically looking forward, right? And afterwards, if you see here, they want to know about what type of testing that you will do. Basically, while giving estimates, you have to keep in mind these things like functional and non-functional testing. Which type of testing I will be doing? I will be doing integration and system or regression or anything else. For example, this is like out of scope. Then you have to let them know that this is out of scope because we will not be doing performance or security. So our estimates will act different, right? Now it comes to the important point, which is man hour concept. Generally, they want to know. For example, if they are working with Agile, Jira, or something. Right, they want to know about your man hour concept, which basically in a day generally we have eight man hours. For example, one man can give you eight hours, right? How will you basically distribute this? For example, suppose you said, okay, we will take seven days to finish this project. It's a big e-commerce project, so for one two days, this is this much man hours will take for the requirement. To basically fulfill, right? Understood. After that, you will say, okay, this much time we will take for test planning because we want to plan, and this is where requirement and test planning part is done for you. Here, you will do the execution and bug reporting, and last day is for the deployment. So that's where they want to know your this. So you have to give the answer in a proper way. This is called as Gantt chart. Make sure you read about it, like how properly you give your estimates on a timeline basis, right? If you give this answer, then definitely, for example, I have given suppose thirty mana. Like right? this is what they want to know. You have to justify. Your answer based on that, right? How many resources it will take, and you have to justify your man hours. That's it. That's how you will give your estimate for a proper project. Okay, this is this works very well, right? I hope this makes sense to you. All right, let's move on to the second question, which is how will you basically escalate or de-escalate the issues in the QA process? For example, QA or Dev. They have some conflicts. How will you resolve resolve that? And what is your process on this? Very important question and very real question, right? I know. Suppose we have a conflict. For example, release branches are not deployed, so we have a QA dev issue. There is a delay. Dev dev is basically delaying the project, right? A bug bug advocacy, which basically means devs are not ready to accept the bugs, right? How will you handle those? They want to know about it, right? Peer conflicts, like what are the different conflicts that how will you handle? Right and the documentation part. Right, how will you handle the documentation part? See, if there are issues related to the branches, then you have to basically highlight, right, and escalate. Escalate where you will escalate. You will escalate through Slack channel, email channel, or let know your stakeholders. This is where it is important, right? So it is very very important for dev delay as well as release branches or bugs related issues. You just escalate the issues and let everyone know about it. Okay. Apart from this, this is your in your hand. You have to improve your documentation as well as conflict. So see what they want to know from this question. They want to know you highlight the P zeros and P one P one immediately on a Slack channel or a email. 
you do a proper communication everyone is clear that okay this one we have to do you have a problem solving mindset instead of a questioning the problem instead of questioning the problem you basically solve the problem first you don't have a favoritism this is very important you don't favor right uh, about your developer right this is very important resolve your resolve your conflicts as soon as possible and you basically whatever the issues are there you will let your stakeholders know that yes these are the issues and this is a risk that we will be going live so this is what they are looking for the escalation and deceleration part very important question and very real scenario all right let's move on to the next question before we move that guys please give a like and subscribe to the channel and type part four in the comment i will include more number of question in this series of manual testing scenario based question all right let's see the next question which is when will you say that you have finished your testing very important question this question generally will ask you many many times and people will ask you this question many many times okay when you think that testing is finished okay so see what they are looking for. They are looking for that. Okay, your requirement traceability matrix, your mapping, basically your mapping of a requirement versus test case. Is it finished? Is it finished? It basically means yes, you have covered most of these scenarios, right? You can download the RTM. I will put a link, proper link uh, here, right? But basically what they are looking forward is two important answers, which basically means your RTM is fulfilled and you have covered requirement and test cases and test scenarios. You have a proper mapping. Every requirement is basically manned to a particular test scenario. Then you think that, okay, this is where our testing should finish and our bugs are resolved and we know what are the bugs are remaining and we are going live with those that's it that's where we are pet testing should finish okay this is what you have to give the answer last question let's take out let's discuss about it which is write a test cases for a lift coffee machine and extra see this is sometimes very tricky answer they are what they are looking for is basically think like a user that's it you have to think like a user that's it but how you have to give the answer here is you have to think like a user drive test cases from the requirement whatever the requirement is given and check and use and write this is what the principle you have to use i'll tell you like how this looks like see whenever they will ask you question related to this for example tell us a test cases for lift for a coffee machine for this pen right whatever it is right how you have to give answer is very simple steps you have to remember these three steps that i have told you which is think like a user drive your test cases from requirement whatever the requirement they they are saying you you have to drive the test cases check use and write which basically means you have to check the product you have to use the product and then you have to write the test cases this is how you have basically your approach should be okay let's see the example of lift i'm going to give you one example of a lift how you will write your test cases for lift this is my lift this has y or x basically this is the size so i will check for dimension i will check for type of door i will check for metal used i will basically positive scenario i will say it is going up down or waiting or not right capacity what is the maximum capacity there what are the buttons emergency button is working fine or not we have a fan we have alarm or not right what is the duration it is taking from going to 1 to 40 floors what is it what is the interior of it light there is a backup present or not what happens if there is a failure logics minimum weight for example what is the minimum weight that people have to do for example we have like two weights how you have basically dig about the logics right this is extra 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 these kind of scenarios or test cases basically they are looking into it right you can learn more about it uh, here this guy basically artoftesting.com slash lift as well as Kofi he has added lots of important test cases you can go through them one by one but i i'll tell you like remember these principles think like a user drive your test cases for requirement and check use and write i hope this makes sense and that's all about in this video guys i hope you have learned something new and uh, if you want part four let me know in the comment i'll see you in the next video